Okay, we are back live at day two of uh, VMworld 2013. We're live in San Francisco, California at Moscone South Lobby. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. This is theCUBE, our flagship telecast. We go out the events, extract the signal from the noise. That's our goal. I'm joined, as always, with my co-host, Dave Vellante at wikibon.org. Hi, everybody, Chuck Hollis is here. Chuck's with e uh, uh, VMware now, so <laughs> Chuck is <laughs> long-time friend of theCUBE. Really great to see you again. Thanks for coming on. It's yeah. great to see both of you. We get together on a regular basis. The topics are always different, but it's always a lot of fun. Yeah, so you are a trend spotter, and um, a good day. You, you've, you've made the move to, to VMware. Mm -hmm. Let's start there. What, 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 what was the attraction? Uh, personal motivation. Uh, I really believe in software-defined everything. Software-defined data center, software-defined storage, and as an article of faith, I think this whole industry is going to transition to this model. So if you believe in a transition, what do you do? You want to go where the action is. So uh, fought and clawed my way into VMware. Uh, uh, sometimes I think it's kind of a disadvantage coming from EMC, because <laughs> they're just so fiercely independent. Um, but found a way to get it associated with a new business unit there, and it's going to be fun. Yeah, so um, and you didn't waste any time. You got right you know, blogging about the the move and the software-defined everything. Yeah, and yeah. You, you unpacked software-defined storage, which, which you want to do, but you're a great communicator, so a lot of times this stuff gets kind of complicated for yeah. people. So, so take us through, what do you mean by software-defined everything? What does that mean to the customer? Well, um, I'll just start with software-defined storage as an example. Um, three things we're looking for. One is a control plane that is as programmable from whatever control stack we want, be it VMware, OpenStack, et cetera, et cetera. So by control plane, I mean, just again, for the lay people, you mean the ability to... Management, operations. Do stuff. Right, you know, do stuff. Move stuff and around be able to do it in a way things. that doesn't require getting on a storage array console and typing a lot of complex commands, but just as a natural part of provisioning or natural part of provisioning. Because that's how it's done in, in the old days and a lot of today, right? Oh, yeah. You're in a command yeah. line interface. Yeah, you, got a you take out your hex code thing. calculator <laughs> and off you go, okay. right? right? Uh -huh. uh, so that's kind of thing number Number one, and everybody's looking for not only that ease of management, but to have it converged with other things they're doing. Network, server, et cetera, et cetera. Second thing is the ability to provision data services. Replication, encryption, all that sort of stuff. And do it, at, hopefully, in software rather than binding it to a piece of hardware. You see the same thing in software-defined networking. And the third big idea is a data plane being able to use a mix of not only our traditional friendly storage arrays that we know and love, but some of these new software-based storage arrays, VSAs, so I can mix and match kind of the technologies I store data on. Um, I think storage is ripe for a change. You know, it's probably going to be the last discipline of the big three to kind of transition to the software-defined model, but it started. So why uh, break apart the, yeah. the, the Im embeddedness of the hardware and mm -hmm. the software, and, and why now? What's the advantage for the customer? Yeah. You know, doesn't it run faster in hardware? These are a lot of the questions yeah. that people are asking. Well, I think there's a couple of forcing functions. First of all, you know, commodity hardware has gotten really good. I mean, I remember when you can get in a TU, you had to go out and buy a big rack of sun servers. So this is getting very powerful stuff. It's now water-cooled. Yeah, it's now <laughs> water-cooled. Uh, but I think the bigger forcing function is people need the efficiency of the operational model. You know, I don't think we have the luxury anymore of having our server silos and our network silos and our storage silos, whatever traditional job roles. And with the customers I talk to, they are hell-bent on not only getting to converged infrastructure, but a converged operational model. I think you heard some of that from the last guest. Yep. That says, you know, the problem is the people in the process, and they're looking for supporting technologies and supporting models that supports this new converged way of doing things. And I think that, more than anything else, will force people into this software-defined model. Chuck, your blog obviously well read by all these storage insiders and, and people following EMC, you've been great. My mom reads it too. You've, been, you've had some great hits. Uh, <laughs> using iPad, I think you're the iPad of, blog. The yeah, yeah. famous, <laughs> iPad, famous blog. iPad post went supernova. Yeah, yeah. You wrote that, drinking yeah. beers in the backyard one day. Yeah. And home and go, yeah. I should do more of that. <laughs> uh, VMware needs you now. So, um, but VMware, the signal is, is you know, very storage. Like Pat goes over, you're over there. A lot of yeah. people like connecting the dots. Okay, Chuck's over there. It's yeah. the, this is the new yeah. EMC. Uh, and, uh, but in a way, VMware has to be IT, and I was early on the, in the yeah. intro said, 
VMware is the next Oracle in terms of the trajectory. If you look at the pace of where this is going, you uh, see. I don't know if we want to be everything you know, Oracle is. But in, so, yeah, in terms yeah, of size right. and, and penetration, yeah, yeah. taking over yeah. Moscone here in San Francisco. 23,000 people, I mean, is that what I heard? Yeah, 23,000 so, people, so you know, it can it continue to grow, yeah. right? So there's growth ahead. Yeah, yeah. Um, but what, what, is, what does VMware have to do? I mean, what are the key holes to be filled, end user computing has been misfired a mm -hmm. few times, yep, yep. Uh, top of the stack's waiting for that enablement underneath. Yep. What do you see? I'm coming to the storage, it's a very central point um, as well. I think you're starting to see it. You know, when Pat went over, he was very clear that VMware should be multiple businesses, kind of a BU strategy. Prior to that, it was one main product, vSphere, everything plugged into vSphere. So part of what I I'm kind of feel good about is, Pat, from a business strategy perspective, seems to have a good view about how to create the swim lanes for different businesses. Uh, the second thing is um, they're bringing in talent. Uh, they're bringing in talent from other disciplines and making Sanjay it work. Sanjay Poonin. Yes, great right. executive and there's hire. More, uh, good CIO. Um, you know, I don't know how I got in there, but you know they're they're, they're bringing. They're you bringing snuck in before they had cred yeah, required that's, credentials. Yeah, then they closed the door <laughs> and then they went higher. Um, but all joking aside, um, they're very well positioned. I mean, you look at it. Great technology, great footprint in the enterprise passionate people who are willing to apply the technology, we see a lot of them here at the show, you know, they, they have basically have the license to go innovate in these areas. And I think you both know it all gets down to execution, <laughs> even though you may have the license to go do these things. So I think the next year will be, you know, can NSX get the market adoption it needs? Can VMware start to be taken seriously in the storage world? Some of these other areas being addressed. But, I, uh, I wrote on know, the crowd chat the question of, um, should I, does IT reward disruptors or sustainers? Mm -hmm. and we're in a disruptive marketplace. Mm -hmm. um, how, how does VMware morph its ecosystem mm -hmm. trying to be a disruptor mm -hmm. and innovator? Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously not yeah. sustaining. Laggards will sustain yeah. and hold on to the old model. Um, yeah. Like Oracle, for instance, we always criticize Oracle, but people are holding on to that installed base. Good people, question. You know, question. Microsoft has, is a victim of that. Good question. So if you think about what VMware did with ESX and vSphere, it's probably the least disruptive disruption of all time. I mean, the proposition is, hey, you can adopt this whole new way of doing things. By the way, keep your operating systems, keep your applications, you know, go at your own pace. And what I like about VMware's model of disruption, it's preserve the best of the old, but still move through the through. Now, that being said, there's some people out there who are getting very aggressive with the technology, you know. Burn the boats, you know, <laughs> this, is, this is what we're doing. But the vast majority of the people I work with is, they're kind of doing a mix. They're preserving some things that aren't ready to change yet, but still introducing the new ways of doing things. And it's my hope, and I think I'm seeing this in the product strategy, they can do that same style of non-disruptive disruption for both networking and storage and availability and some of the other disciplines. Chuck, in your opinion, can, can that IT guys want to get from point A to point B without that disruption? You make a great point. It's, yeah. it's the part yeah. of why, why VMware's... Can't start over again. We'd love to, but it's just not going to happen. So can VMware replicate that dynamic mm -hmm. in storage and networking, and networking in particular. <laughs> what's, what's different, what's the same, mm -hmm. how long is it going to take? Well, I'm not a networking guy, so I get to be a kind well, of- Well, you are now. I am now, officially. <laughs> yeah, I guess I have to learn how to be one. But what I'm observing is, the networking community was ready for a change. They were ready to start doing things differently. Uh, you know, they had gotten so deep in the minutiae of setting up networks and controlling and provisioning networks. Uh, I don't know if you're following the social feeds, the reaction to NSX, it was huge. Oh, yeah. And you know, people are just going to take this stuff and give it a thorough workout. And uh, I saw the partner community that they were announcing up there, pretty big. One name was missing, but you know, <laughs> but everybody else together was pretty good. <laughs> we talked about that uh, yesterday. Yeah, <laughs> we did talk about that yesterday. I would have talked about it too. Um, but all positioning aside, you know, people are ready for a change. My belief is that the storage guys are ready for a change as well. You know, anybody who's lived in the world of storage administration, storage architecture, yeah, it's great technology, et cetera, et cetera. But you start yearning for a simpler way of doing things. And uh, without that appetite, I don't think the technology so really matters. So there's a people and process imperative, uh -huh. you're saying. Right. So even different. the professionals, now the guys who direct the uh, careers to these disciplines, you know, they are interested in looking at new ways of doing things. So I'll give you an example. Um, yesterday, uh, VMware announced vSAN, which is a non-array storage array. Mm. And if you're a storage traditionalist, you might be tempted to say, oh my God, where are the LUNs, where are the fiber channel ports, you know, how can you call this What am I going to so do? Good? What am I going to do? <laughs> but I've been involved in a lot of the early customer interactions around this, and they're intrigued. There's some important new ideas in there, and they're going to give it a shot. Now, I think, you know, 
the over and under is, you know, will it actually catch and will this become a major new style of, of storage in the industry? But there's certainly an appetite out there for people to take a look at this stuff and give it a shot. Yeah, one of the things we're seeing, the trends we're seeing here, the cube that's kind of been coming into the event yeah. and also here, yeah. the discussion is, there's no one hammer and nail model anymore. It's multiple no, no, hammers. No, no answer, right? There's, no, there's, there's multiple answers, and we yeah. just heard uh, the, uh, the customer I was just mm -hmm. on earlier saying, hey, my process and automation's different because I automate my process, not someone else's automation right. ma manages my right. unknown and process. I would go farther he would probably see over time, that's his secret sauce. I've got a better way of figuring out business problems and automating and improving them. Monolithic solutions aren't flying, right? Nope, so if nope, you want an appliance, nope. great, you get an appliance. If you want an appliance with some more software, you can buy that. So people yep. want specific, broken down menu of, of yeah. services. Give me a manifest, have it your way, if you will. Yeah. Um, forget this gold, silver, bronze thing. Let me tell you what I want. Yeah. I want nine copies of my data, I want compliance in Switzerland, <laughs> and just going down the, yeah. down the manifest. I want process compliance, I want to do blah, some blah, public blah, 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 cloud, blah. boom, 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 done. Give me, right, yeah. give me. And, Publish. And we're also in an era, I think but that's of, differently. Now, yeah. the, now the IT yeah. landscape is like changing, so like titles are changing, the mindsets are mm -hmm. changing. We just talked about cloud, uh, yeah. you know, cloud scaling, right? Mm -hmm. Horizontal scale. Yep. You know. Cloud style, right? Well, I mean, what's the new well, what's the new mindset of the users? I think we've got a generation of business users who aren't scared about having a technology discussion. Now, I'm a little older here. At the time, you know, if you go back 20 years, well, <laughs> IT technology, I don't know any of that stuff. Yeah. We have raised a whole generation of business leaders now, I believe, that are comfortable with not only talking about technology but consuming it. Hey, yeah. let me what I, tell you what I can do with Google. Let me tell you what I can do with Amazon. Let me tell you what I can do with these things. Yeah. And I think it's a lot Analytics of Analytics drive that too. People yeah, don't mind pulling their iPad out yeah, and saying what's performance Look what look I can like. do, I created a model, look what you're doing. Yeah. Um, these intelligent business consumers, I think, are probably the biggest driver of all of forcing some of these transformations we're talking about. Because I got to tell you, if you're a business person and you can't get what you want from your IT guy, you have a credit card, yeah. you know how to use it to your earlier point. Okay, so right? here's a question for you. So yeah. what are the biggest areas of change from a title perspective, yeah. the personnel inside an oh, IT? That's, that's really easy. First of all, and there's some good survey data to back this up. One is, uh, let's see if I can, I can't even remember the survey, it came out about three months ago. But you know, what are CIOs looking for in their organizations that they think they're deficient? Uh, number one on the list was business facing and people facing skills. The ability to engage with other parts of the business. Now, I don't think you would have found that four or five years ago, but that's kind of the biggest thing. Yeah. They realize they have a service to sell and it's all about engaging with folks. Second, uh, process people, people who can look across very vast domains and figure out how to continually re-engineer the processes. Not a typical... What are they calling these people? DBAs? System admins? I uh, mean, these are traditional titles. People have jobs going, hey, am I going to be displaced? Process engineers. Uh, Data scientists? No, customer engagement managers. Um, it's starting to look a lot like a business where you find a lot of the same things you find in a manufacturing organization or a retail organization showing up in Program IT. Program managers. Yeah, here's the joke. Yeah. You know, um, for years I've heard people in IT rant, gee, we ought to be running IT like a business. Congratulations. You now have marketing, you now have sales, <laughs> you have <laughs> process engineers, you have quality control. You know, you're starting to look a lot like a business. So I want to get one more question in, because we could go all day with Chuck yeah. and our, our good friend Rick Jackson, who originally got us here, is waiting. But um, I want to go back to the software defined. So for a number of years, companies like, let me use Microsoft and Oracle as an yeah, example, yeah. but I could, use, I could use Amazon and Google too, but software companies grabbing certain storage function, mm -hmm. you know, putting it into their stack. Yeah. Now, the, the challenge was always for them is it only worked on their applications, yeah, yeah. you know, and it always seemed to run better yeah. in hardware, and EMC yeah. made a great business out of this. Yeah, God um, bless. <laughs> now you have what you pointed out, you mm -hmm. got a zillion cores and all this processing yeah, power, yeah. it's really inexpensive, yeah. and you got VMware, who's not, who's kind of application agnostic, yeah. in a position to own the protocols throughout the stack, yeah. to take things like vSAN, integrate Flash. Um, why doesn't VMware become the dominant player in the storage business um, over time. I think a lot of the reason you can see on the show floor, this wonderful ecosystem. If you think about it, the very best storage technology today shows up on the VMware platform. You that software defined, a physical array. I mean, if you want to do some of the wildest, craziest things with storage today, it's in a VMware ecosystem. And I think the opportunity going ahead on both the networking and the storage front is to do a little bit of both. Let's have the best ecosystem with some of the best solutions, but also you know, some unique differentiators that we can offer because we're part of the stack. I think everybody's familiar with kind of the Microsoft and the Oracle story, and no one wants to see a repeat of that. So the allure of monopoly will, will not uh, um, suck you in. I haven't seen a yeah. whiff of that in my time at VMware. <laughs> 
very partner-centric, creating opportunities for partners, but I don't think they're mutually exclusive. I think customers win when you have the best choices available to you and they all work well So together. are we going to, final question, because we're going to get Rex Rick Jackson, the CMO of Rackspace, former CMO of VMware on, but Chuck, I got to ask, everyone really wants to know one burning question burning around question. Chuck Hollis. Are we going to see a nicer, gentler Chuck Hollis now that you're in the ecosystem and you got to be bear hugging all your new best friends like Pat Gelsinger? Yeah, <laughs> partner centric, yeah, partner centric. We got, all know you as a lovable, <laughs> lovable kind cuddly. individual, kind individual. Uh, I bet you can find a couple of posts back there where I kind of snark at <laughs> people pretty hard. But the answer is yeah, it's a very partner centric company and uh, it's easier. Uh, I also like to point out that uh, you know, at EMC had a lot of partners like Microsoft that VMware didn't particularly like very much either. So, you know, every company partners, but yeah. it's certainly yeah. a different partner set at VMware. So, awesome. same old Chuck. Yep. <laughs> you get what you get. Yeah, that's yeah. what it is. Yeah, You're too old to change. Not like yeah, being yeah, changed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's an to do something different, which I'm yeah. really looking forward to. Yeah, congratulations. I think it's a great move. Obviously, software defined data center is yeah. happening. Yeah. And yeah. Disruptions there, yeah. which we talked about yesterday. HP had some disappointing changes in earnings. I, Microsoft is going to have a new CEO. Certainly, there's things going on. Yeah. Cloud style is the focus, and that's the buzz here at uh, VMworld. So, again, VMware's positioning themselves for small, medium sized business and up. So good luck with that. Yep. Uh, this is theCUBE at VMworld 2013. We'll be right back with Rick Jackson, the CMO of Rackspace, right after this short break. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante.